This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Yeah, it's Alex. And here we go with yet another ramble. It goes until midnight tonight and right here. And we'll get to our citizen panel a little bit later. Uh, and uh, if you're listening to us anywhere else in the world, it's uh, five minutes past 10 o'clock on the east coast of the United States. So accommodate for that. And you can tell whether we're live, whether you're listening to a recording or, or, or whatever. There's so many different ways you can listen to us and so on. Anyway, tonight... We have a special guest, as we always have guests to kind of start our program off with. And in this case, uh, well, uh, we actually can see him. Ladies doing? and gentlemen. Ah, there he is. You just spoke too early. <laughs> now you can speak. It, look at that. It's Bob Rubin. Hey, hey, hey. lighten up, everybody. woo Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Look at that. Yeah. What's that? Oh, that's an Elvis drinking uh, glass. El- right now, it's well, it's an Elvis pint, but right now it's got my my hot, uh, iced coffee in it. It's got your iced coffee. I'm uh, drinking my coffee. I am doing Major Dickinson's blend from Pete's. So here's oh. looking at you. You got a Pete's right near you? Huh? N- no, <laughs> I I this is a a thing I do with uh, what do you call it uh, the. Uh, uh, you, buy, you buy the coffee peach blend? Y- yep, 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 yep. You know, so. Uh, what I like to do is make a pot of coffee. Yeah. At night, put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. And then I'm good to go with my ice javine, boy. Your, your ice javine? <laughs> there we go. I made my picture a little bigger and got rid of all that. Uh-huh! Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it, we are uh, talking to Rube from his lovely home in the Hollywood Hills, is it? Bel Air. Bel Air, yeah. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it's just one little room that we're showing you because the, the whole place is about 28 rooms, isn't it? I read it out. Well, I can't take everybody on a tour, though. But, you know, the, the reason that I've been staying in this room is because of the uh, renovations going on. Yeah, what what are you doing? What what renovations are you making? New walls, new walls put up, new wallpaper, new new molding, uh, new new pillars. The lake's being drained. It's a real pain in the ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> the but, lake's being drained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite quite a lot of work for you there. You know. Oh man, it's crazy. You know. Uh, so I tucked myself into this little room off of the uh, east wing, and uh, uh, so that, this is where I have to stay for uh, God, I don't know how much longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah from, and the east wing is what a studio apartment? Yes. Yeah. The east yeah. Wing is, okay. The east well. wing is it? Is an I guess you would call it an in law apartment. <laughs> in law apartment. <laughs> In this uh, in this apartment, by the way, uh, we have a um, uh, what do you call it a, uh, a pantry, but the pantry in the old days was the maid's room. Was it really? And there's a bathroom right next to it. Yeah, so she could, you know. Uh, but that's well, where that's where the maid lived. Very I'm small not, quarters, however. How many bathrooms do you have? We have two bathrooms. Ask me how many bedrooms we have. How many bedrooms do you have? Three. Three? Yeah. Then we have a huge kitchen that's about the size of your apartment. Really? Yeah. And then we have a foyer that's about the size of your apartment. And then we have a living room and a dining room. And uh, as I say, three bedrooms, one of which is this office, uh, which I use as the office. We call it the office. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's about about... 10, 11 rooms, something like that. You've done very well for yourself. 2,500 square feet. No. And and do you know how much rent we pay? $200 a month. Zero. 
What do you mean? Uh, well, we're in the middle of a, a, a legal action. Not with the landlords, but with the guy who rented us the apartment. Seems he couldn't rent the apartment. He could sublet the apartment, but he couldn't rent it. Oh, I got you. And so we have been in court for three years with this thing. You haven't been paying in three years? Have, 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 well, there's nobody to pay. We don't have. We do not have a lease with anybody. Well, that's bizarre, man. No, we don't have a lease. So, uh, and you know, I mean, they could throw us out of here, I suppose, if they wanted to, but they can't because there's a legal action going on. And even if they threw us out, it would remain empty because they couldn't rent it till they solved their claim from the previous renter. So you're like, you know, doing an infomercial now for one of those reverse mortgages. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a reverse lease. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, it, 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 in a way, I can't, it kind of bothers me. You know, I mean, people go, well, huh, that shouldn't bother you. But it does bother me because I would like to have the lease on this apartment. And I'd like to be able to, you know, do a few things with it, which I'm not going to do till I know we at least have the lease on it. Um, the landlords seem to think we're okay and don't mind the concept of us being the leaseholders eventually. But they can't do anything about it now as long as his suit is on. And the suit is from the guy who leased us the apartment. So you let me see if I have this. Well, let me let me basically, let me. Basically, you got a rifle and you're squatting. That's pretty much it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, here here's the deal. Here's the deal. Let me explain. Let me explain this to the people who haven't heard this complete story before. In New York City, there's a thing called uh, stabilized apartments, and this was a rent stabilized apartment. There are two kinds. There's there's rent controlled, which don't exist anymore, but if you had the apartment back uh, in 1935 or something, you could then give it to your um, heirs to rent, okay? And that the rents on those are really cheap. I mean, they're like they're paying 500 bucks a month for 25 rooms or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But then there's the rent stabilized. And rent stabilized means that yes, you have an apartment and it can only go up so much every couple of years. And the rent stabilization also has with it that you can you can also sublet the apartment if you're not going to be there, but for not more than two years and not more than the price that you're currently paying in right. rent. All right. So really, it's an accommodation. Like if I wanted to move to California tomorrow uh, for a year or so because I had some work out there, I could sublet it and then come back. But I couldn't charge the guy person more money than I lease it for. And I, uh, I couldn't do it for more than two years. Well, he signed a three-year lease with us, not a sublet, at double what he's paying in rent. And wow. that's against the law. That's called the illusory tenancy. And uh, what the usual outcome of illusory tenancy is, people like us get the lease in our name, okay, and uh, he has to pay back all the money over what he was paying to us, plus treble damages. Sounds like he got hit with a luxury of grandeur. Y yes. So that, it, that's, that's the whole story illegally. Of, uh, I, I don't want to talk about it any more than that. But, okay, so, so you but, got that, but that's, that, that's what the situation is here in New York. This is a rent-stabilized apartment. Yeah. And, we, and we weren't told it was, he didn't. He never called it a sublet, didn't, didn't make it a sublet. In fact, he signed the lease as the landlord. <laughs> so it, it's, it, but he's got a case against them because they, they, he feels they screwed him in the very beginning as well. So he's fighting them, he's kind of fighting us, but we're the only ones who have no, you know, we're the good guys in this. So we're just sitting here, you yeah. know. So, uh, uh, and, and, and how much rent do you pay? That's crazy, man. <laughs> I pay $25,000 a month. R really? It's, the things are getting very expensive in California. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> well, they say, they say California is doing very well. You know? Los Angeles is actually uh, a suburb of San Francisco right now. Is it really? That's how far out people are having to go to get a house. Well, no, supposedly they're very expensive in San Francisco. 
Oh, yeah, man. Supposedly, an apartment in San Francisco costs more to rent than an apartment in New York City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know the apartment you had? Yeah. That would... That's probably renting now for one gajillion dollars. Well, actually, I I, I would say it's probably around four thousand dollars a month at least. And there were two of them that I had. I had two apartments. You remember? Right, right. But but I'm saying, are you talking about? Yeah, one of them is going for at least four grand easily. Yeah, yeah. Maybe more than that. To be honest with you. Yeah, could could very well be. Hey, listen, I I you know I, I remember that apartment, uh, and I remember a Christmas or after Christmas that we were there. And do you remember what we did? <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, well, what? I give me well, a there was a guy up, there was somebody. You see, we, when you get, it's Christmas time and you, now it's time to get rid of your trees. Yeah. You're supposed to take them down the back stairwell because I had a bad back stairwell, kind of like a fire escape. And then you were supposed to leave it out on the street. Well, instead, we noticed that somebody had dragged it all the way down from the fourth floor uh, down the stairway inside the apartment house and left, yep. of course, pine needles all the way. So you and I traced the pine needles back and found the exact apartment where the tr tree came from. Right. So what did we do then? Then we we took the tree and put it back, didn't we? We we dragged it back up the stairs and leaned it against the guy's <laughs> doorway. Yeah, man. <laughs> so oh, that when, oh, oh. As, that's always a good one, huh? I said that's always a good one. And they even put a note up saying, "Would you please take your trees down in the back way because you know the pine needles and so on. We don't mind them getting in that area because the wind's going to blow them away and stuff like that." So yeah, some yeah. poor asshole who was like the landlord or whatever had to vacuum that whole goddamn four flights of stairs. Four flights of needles, man. It's panic we, in Needle Park. We didn't We didn't have a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Panic uh, Bush. No, we didn't have a uh, elevator in that building. It's only four stories. And I was on the, I was on the first story. So, you know, I only had to go up one flight of stairs. Yeah. And then I had two apartments right next to each other. So I could go across that thing and go from one apartment to the other. And I lived in one and I made the other one in the office. I remember, remember that. Remember those days when I had that kind of fuck you money? <laughs> yeah, man. Money, money. I'll, I'll tell you where I made my big mistake, okay? Is I took guys like you out to lunch all the time. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was pretty good for picking up the tab, wasn't I? Yeah, man. You That's knew that if you were going out to dinner with me or something, you, you didn't have to worry about where the money was coming from. No. And there was a reason for that. Number one was a thank you for all the kind work you had done for me, although I I, I didn't th don't think I had to take you out to dinner that many times, but I did. And uh, the, other, the other reason was that uh, I never liked to argue over the check. You know, like the check comes and everybody goes, well, what did you have and what did you have and what did you have and what did you, you know. I was always broke, too. That was the other problem. <laughs> well, that was the other problem with you. But what I'm saying is I knew, yeah. I always hated it. And every, so everybody knew when they went out with me, I would pick up the check because I just didn't want to argue over it. You know, I mean, let's not argue over it. I'll take care of it. And I had the money to take care of it. And in those days, of course, things weren't as expensive either. No, they weren't. Now, the best thing anybody ever did with me was David Feldman, who never calls me, never talks to me. I have no idea why not, but I never hear from him, okay? Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're out. Uh, David Feldman, two, two cheapest people I've known in my lifetime are David Feldman and Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no! And oh, wait a minute! And uh, the porno actor Ron uh, 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 Jeremy. Jeremy Ron never would pick up a check. Never. You would sit. As, what I want to do is I want to take Gilbert and Ron and have out to lunch together, and then sit there and videotape which one was going to pick up the check. And I bet they they would be there till midnight rather than either one of them reaching over and grabbing the check, okay? But Feldman was almost as cheap. 
So I'm out to lunch in L.A. with uh, with Feldman and with uh, Warren Thomas, the late Warren Thomas. Yeah. And we're sitting there and we're eating. Blah, 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 blah. And it's time. It's time to, for the check. And I, as usual, because number one, they're comics and they're semi-starving, and also because I, you know, I I don't like to argue over the check. I say, uh, here, give me the check. And I look at it and I pull out my credit card and. The, Guy takes it away and comes back, at, with the uh, with the credit card slip, and and Feldman says, "Here, let me help with that." Right? I, I said, "What? Well, how?" He says, "I'll take care of the tip." I said, "Oh, okay, that's fine." So he grabs the American Express slip, and writes in the tip. <laughs> okay. That's funny, man. <laughs> That was his way of paying the tip. Ron Jeremy used to be my neighbor when I, before I moved here. I had an apartment for 16 years. Yeah. In a really nice uh, area, uh, the foothill of uh, of Runyon Canyon, and uh, and anyhow, he uh, it was. I just thought it was funny because one time, uh, the guy that did the Boondock Saints movies was having a barbecue. Yeah. And uh, I guess Ron Jeremy had a role in the first uh, in that first movie, and, but it was just funny him sitting around, uh, and he's talking business like what you know, like what's going well for him, you know, like if he said oh, I got a radio show now that's doing well, and then I'm you know I've got a couple other things that I'm working on, a couple other projects, and we're trying to get together a television show. But he was uh, he was it was so funny because he just be sitting there going. Yeah, the cock rings are going really well, and the uh, the uh, <laughs> penis extension cream is doing really. The Ron Jeremy penis extension cream. So he had all these sex items that he that he put his name to, and those that, that was his business, man. <laughs> all his endorsements. Didn't he ever <coughs> open up his uh, scrapbook and show you all his clippings? He's, no, he, he he did that to my girlfriend and I at the time, Kathleen. We were down in L.A. and we had dinner and stuff like that. And this, one thing led to another. Finally, it's like four o'clock in the morning, and Ron's been driving us around, right? Yeah. And he stops in a parking lot, goes to the trunk of his car, and at four o'clock in the morning is showing us his scrapbook with all his clippings. <coughs> no way. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh my God, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean I've known Ron for years, and I, you know, I think that uh, nobody hates Ron Jeremy, do they? He's he's a good guy. He's a decent a guy. Him. Huh? The government's after him, and a lot of people hate him. What do you mean the government's after him? I don't. Oh, you don't know. No, no. He's, I'm just joking. Yeah, he's joking. I'm, I'm glad he said he's joking because I could get sued by Ron Jeremy, and then I'd have to think he was an asshole. Anyway, now nobody thinks you're an asshole. No. Do you know anybody that thinks you're an asshole? I don't know anybody that thinks that Bob Rubin is an asshole. If you're obscure and you're broke, a lot of usually people don't think you're an asshole. Yeah, well, uh, that's why they think I've gotten nicer. If you're right, <laughs> yeah, 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 if you're rife with uh, uh, what do you call it, obscurity, then uh, yeah, people people usually have nothing to say about you. <laughs> 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 Nothing. Zero. Zilcho. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I I think there were a lot of people who thought I was an asshole. I mean, I, I knew people had bad things to say about me. I and, don't think so. Uh, well, wasn't I kind of an asshole in the old days to certain people? Not everybody. I wasn't an asshole to you. You were my friend. I, you know. Yeah, yeah. But there were, there were people I didn't like that I was not nice to as I've gotten older I'm nice to everybody because as I say when you don't have when you don't have any money you get nicer <laughs> you know uh, and and I'm I'm uh, if if being on a fixed income has had anything decent uh, assigned to it it's that I've become the most well-liked person in America <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah oh and I don't think you'd be able to get a loan from Alex he's awful nice these days no, are there are there people we know? Are there comics we know that are universally just hated by everybody? I think Bill Maher was hated by everybody, if I remember correctly. I don't know. Uh, 
I, I, I know a few, but I'm not going to mention any names right now. Why? Because you've suddenly decided that you want to remain your nobody hates you role? Uh, you yeah. Know? No, man, because uh, I could be wrong. You know what I mean? Well, you know, I never rolled with comedians. You know, people think because I'm a comic that that's all I did was hang out with comedians. Yeah. And I very rarely hung out with comedians. I mean, back in the day, you and I would go out and, and then, um, or, you know, actually back in the day, there were places on the street where you met up, you know, it's, so it wasn't like calling up somebody and planning an evening with them. You'd see them. Yeah. You get to see them and you end up hanging out with a group of people, you know, but, um, um, but it wasn't like, Hey, let's go to the movies or something like that. At least for me, it wasn't, you know, at least for me, uh, it's like all the comics I would see, you know, or, or at your show, you know, you're at your show and you got two other comics working with you, first of all. Yeah. And then, so, and then you might have a third comic that came by to do a guest set and a couple more comics just come to hang out. You know, that's, a, that's what, it, that's what made San Francisco so much fun. And then <clears throat> at the end of the night, people would come in from all the shows around the Bay area and we'd all meet at the Holy city zoo. You know, so you you never hung out with the comics uh, uh, after hours. I mean, they never come over to your place and you hang out. See, I no. I always hung out with comics because they were the people I knew. Okay, right. but you know who I didn't hang out with? Other radio people. Well, there you which go. Which is a similar thing. Yeah, uh, it's a similar thing. I never liked hanging out with other radio people. Number one, because all they talk about is radio, and I can't think of anything more boring to talk about than radio. And uh, it, it suddenly became a my dick is bigger than yours situation. And maybe the same thing with when you hang out with comics. You know, certain comics are going to brag about their careers. And then you're going to do the horrible thing, which I've always said to people do not do. And that is compare your career against others' successes. Yeah. In other words, don't, don't ever get mad about somebody else's success because you can't, you know... You can't judge your success by that. Yeah, man. You know, uh, uh, some comics were always on, um, and, and and that usually has a negative connotation. You might think, "What's wrong with that?" <laughs> it's like, well, a lot of things. Well, well, there were some. It, it, uh, I've often said this: there are some comics who create an on-stage persona, which is not them, but it's their on-stage persona. And given a couple of years, they become that persona. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I can't. I uh, Bobby Slayton kind of, as the years went on, became more and more of his persona. Yeah, he did. Than he was the Bobby Slayton that we kind of knew in the old days, because it just you you play it so often, and it's what people expect out of you, so that's what you play. The guy who really maintained his persona uh, off stage was Kevin Pollack. He's so, uh, I, I understand he's changed, you know, and the last time I've talked to him, he changed. But there was a while there when he was coming up where the character he was on stage was the same character you got off stage. And right, you have to, I, huh? Well, I would heard that uh, Kevin Pollack, yeah, the character that he created on stage, I heard that that character, he, that's what he was doing first. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that's how he was acting. And then he says, "Hey, this would be good for being, you know, for using it on stage." And then, so in other words, like that schmooze guy, uh, he was like, he was that way all the time, and that actually helped him in this town. Yeah, the schmoo you know? the schmoozing thing. By the way, let me just say this so that people won't uh, get the wrong idea. Uh, I like uh, uh, Kevin. He's he's a great guy. And uh, uh, he's been a friend for years, and I, I, all I'm saying is that he had a character he created on stage that became the character off stage. I mean, he would walk into a room and say, no, no, everybody sit down, you know, one of those kind of things, playing the ego thing. And, you know, he really wasn't that way most of the time. As years went on, he got away from that. And I think it's because he started acting a lot, and so there was no persona that he was in engendering he had a new persona every time he went into a movie you know? right right so anyway. yeah he did well for himself yeah oh he's done very well for himself you know um but you know it, it, 
as years go on, it gets harder and harder to maintain what what you have. Yeah. Uh, because people go, oh well, we've been there, done that. You know, it's it's a, it's what they said was the five stages of show business. Who's Bob Rubin? Uh, let's hire Bob Rubin. Get me Bob Rubin. Get me a Bob Rubin type. And the final stage, who's Bob Rubin? Right. Y you know. So people. I'm, I'm, I'm the. I think I rose the fast. I'm proud of this too, by the way, because it's not show business isn't easy. But I think I rose the quickest to level five than anybody ever <laughs> in the history of show business. The history. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time for this one. This way. Yeah. You want to do it again next week? Absolutely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, lighten Bye. lighten up. The old Rube was there. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, so everybody, thank you very much, Bob. Good having him here. Notice I'm wearing the same shirt. That's because we just did this live. No, I, I wasn't wearing the hat at the time. Uh, and next week I'll be wearing this shirt, and I won't be wearing it. It's all it's pre-recorded, okay? Mainly for his convenience, and also because I used to try tried in the beginning to put the. Uh, the uh, guests on with the uh, with the citizens panel, but for some reason that didn't work. I, I I don't know why logically it should, but what happened was the the citizens panel would then shut up, okay, and not say anything uh, about uh, uh, you know while that person was on because they they wanted to hear him. He was funny. He was a comedian. Oh, here comes Mike. Boy, Mike always. Mike, you always you always got to be the first one, right, Mike? You're always there now. Yeah. It used to be Scott, but now we don't even hear from Scott any longer. So, you know, uh, who knows? Hey, oh, wait a minute. That's hear, did you hear the uh, latest? Wait a minute. I haven't even started here, I, and and already you're throwing something on. Like you okay. probably didn't you probably didn't listen to the last half hour of the show, did you? No. Uh, see, see, so you come into the show. With, uh, with with no idea of what the fuck went on. Here we go now. There we can see him. Yeah. So, you know, you just come into it cold. And then, right. you, then you come in with something that may not have anything to do with what we were talking about. So what were you going to say? You know, O.J. Simpson's going to get loose within 16 hours or so. No, he won't. He won't? Nope, absolutely not. Well, they said, yeah, he's going to get paroled. No, you said he's going to be loose. Well, paroled, I, I should say. Well, he won't be, but he won't get out till October 1st. I thought it was earlier than that, no, though. October 1st. Do you think they should leave him in jail? No, I don't think he should have been in jail in the first place. Why? Why? What did he? What did? What did he do that was so terrible? He killed his wife. No, so, no, no. So, so wait a minute, wait a minute. He killed his wife. What? What court of law said he killed his wife? That's what the uh, Marsha you know, quote the Dream Team was saying. Was saying that he was that he he was guilty. He was guilty. Who the charge. Dream Team said that was he was guilty. Weren't they defending him? No, no, whoever Marsha, uh, I thought that was the dream team, wasn't it? What? Marsha Clark or whatever. No, that was the, no was, they, were, they were the nightmare team is what they were. The dream team was like, you know, Kardashian and uh, uh, all those guys. Johnny Cochran. Because, well, they blew that case wide open. Uh, first of all, side. first of all, Phil, would you agree with me? Should should O.J. Simpson have gotten as much time as he got for what happened in Las Vegas, or was that Absol just, or were they just fucking with him because they weren't trying to get even with him? Yeah, absolutely not. Even the guy that he uh, he uh, accosted in the hotel room says that he's going to go to uh, O.J.'s parole hearing and say that he he got too much time. Oh yeah, I mean this it's absolutely ridiculous. And then, of course, Mike here comes on and says, well, he killed his wife and, his, and, his, and the, the kid. And, uh, and I said, what court of law ever proved that? Yeah, he got away with that one. Well, yeah, he, he did. He, he did. He, he, you can argue that you think he got away with it. 
But the biggest argument is is that he is not guilty. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So and 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 you should treat that's him that way deal. because that's the way our democracy works. Yeah, that you is know. the deal. But but uh, you know to say that oh, well, I'm glad he got that time in Vegas, you know, in the in the Nevada jail because of what he did to his wife and no, he they, 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 they made no sense at all. You know. Yeah. It was not right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed your Rube uh, uh, conversation for the first half hour. Yes. Uh, yeah. The next and, next uh, next week uh, next welcome. week he actually is going to do some stand up. Oh, very uh, nice. Yeah, I we, yeah. I like his act. Yeah, yeah. He's going to do some stand up. Just yeah. wait. It's very funny. Go ahead, wait till you see it. Okay. But that's next week. You'll have to. Uh, Yes, we do them all in one day, ladies and gentlemen, and get them out of the way, right? But uh, I, in order to get the full experience, I, I can't listen to it on the live feed. Uh, well, uh, the feed, I'd have to uh, watch the Facebook thing. Uh, the, uh, yeah, 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 because okay. it, it's also a visual joke as well. Uh, all right. Yeah. And we've been joined by Rob Alfano. Hello, Hello. Mr. Alfano. How's it going? Oh, it's going fine. I'm uh, still dealing with the cat. The cat now is ignoring me. The cat is. What'd you do to it? No, nothing. The cat is so comfortable here now. It's gotten to the point where the cat goes, "Hey, leave me alone. I got my own things to do here. I'm just hanging out in the living room." <laughs> you know. That's oh, cool you're here. That. Okay, pet me. Okay, now go do your fucking show. You know. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the, the cat has gone through these different levels of, of, of acceptance of being here. And just about the time she gets used to the fact that, well, I guess this is my home. All of a sudden, here comes her mommy back and off she goes back home. So, yeah. And then yeah. I have to deal with Marjorie because she's going to go through, through uh, postpartum depression with this whole thing because she loves the cat. So now, yeah. she, now she's talking about maybe we should get a kitty cat. Maybe we should get two of them because you can't just get one. Just share custody. <laughs> share custody. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I uh, agree. Your friend's cat. Yeah, yeah. Get two cats, you'd be happy. What do you think about this whole thing with OJ? Do you think he should get out, uh, Rob? Yeah, I do. Yeah. He's been a model prisoner. He's been a mentor to guys in prison. He's coached. He's gone through all these programs. Yeah. And he was given too harsh of a sentence based on, uh, you know, the fact that there was hangover from him uh, getting away with murder. But when he gets out of prison. Yeah. He's going to have the Goldman's after his ass. He ain't done. Well, I mean, they he still have. They still want money. They got their eyes on okay. a whole bunch of stuff. I, well, I, I, I got news oh, yeah. for Retirement. And he's going to get out with two and a half million in cash. How's he, how's, free, he, how's, he, how's he going to get out with two and a half million in cash? He's going to get 20 grand a month uh, from the NFL uh, that's just been going into a bank account. And uh, they said that he's going to have two and a half million dollars. I thought it was three. Uh, maybe I can't. so close enough. Well, I mean, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What is, what is that money? Is it? It's retirement from like, the NFL, which is so not. So it's a pension, uh, so they can't get it. Money. They can't yeah, get so, it. The Goldman's can't, can't, touch can't touch it. Yeah. Yeah. So the Goldman's aren't going to be able to get shit. They, you know, yeah, he's, uh, you know. You know he's, I mean, they'll make a, his life miserable as much as they can. Well, it can't be as miserable as sitting in a jail cell. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I've dealt. <laughs> he's I, he's I, done I, a pretty good job of. Uh, of of uh, of of his time there, nine years. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times passed since he went to jail. What, did, they, did they have golf courses on uh, at uh, no, Lompoc or wherever, no. wherever but, he's at? Uh, oh, uh, no, he's not in Lompoc. No, wherever he's at. Love yeah. something. Love 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 lock. Lo lo love lock. Yes. Yeah, love lock. Yeah. Is that uh, Nevada? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by uh, Reno. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's with Hell's Angels had a had a fight and uh, a couple of guys got killed and uh, uh, this uh, one guy that I met and rode a couple of times with uh, what the hell is his name again but he was the head of the Sonoma Hell's Angels and he threw the first kick that uh, yeah. started the whole uh, whole thing where yeah. those guys got uh, Ray Ray Folks that was his uh, name yeah, Ray okay. Ray oh. anyway uh, hello to Scott how you doing Scott Doing good. Yeah, what do you think about it? Uh, should uh, OJ get out? Um, Sure. I got no problem with it. Yeah, yeah. I got no problem with him yeah. either. 
Uh, by the way, the Goldmans are a piece of shit. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I've, de I've, dealt, I've, de I've dealt with him, with yeah, the father. I dealt with him, too. I worked at Core TV. We had him up as yeah, guests a couple I found of him to be just... He, arrogant. He, arrogant. And at one point, I said to him, you know what my problem is with you? Because my problem was is that when he was going around and he was trying to... Uh, you know, make everybody say, well, you know, he murdered my kid and all of that. And it, 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 he was trying to subvert what I considered the judicial system in America by not allowing that verdict to stand. I mean, he went and got his civil suit and he should be happy with that. But I told him, I said, my problem with you, and I couldn't even tell him what my problem with him was. He says, you have a problem with me? Like nobody could have a problem with Daddy Goldman. What's his first name? Uh, Ron Ronald. No, Ron was the son. I think they were both Ron, no, weren't they? No, no. Uh, Fred Goldman. Fred Goldman. Fred Goldman, that's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. And, uh, and I said, yeah. And he hung up on me. Oh, wow. He wouldn't, he wouldn't even let me say what I was going to say to him, which was, I think you're subverting what I consider the justice system in America by trying to go around it and just assume, have people assume guilt. When he has to be given the uh, the uh, ability to not have guilt presumed. In other words, the minute he walked out of that courtroom, uh, people should have treated him like he was not guilty, even though you may think he was guilty in your own mind. You you can't treat him as though he was guilty because he he was found not guilty. Uh, and um, listen, there is always a chance here that he didn't do it. And you say, no, 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 you're laughing. But there are a lot of people that believe that who did it might have been his son. And that he was trying to protect his son. That's a possibility. There, there, it, there is there's that, that theory has been going around for years. Why would the son, uh, you know, bag his uh, I have mother? no idea. That, all I'm telling you is one of the theories that's been running around. You know, How along with all the theories about the drug stuff, because Faye Resnick and Nicole were were playing with some unscrupulous. And they people say that that Ron Goldman. And, uh, the, the, and again, I'm just saying allegedly, uh, people allegedly. say that Ron Goldman was a drug dealer and that it was a drug deal gone bad. And some drug guys came in and did this, you know. So, I mean, there are a whole bunch of other possible scenarios which nobody in America wants to believe or even consider because they like the they like the notion that OJ did it. Well, you watched that uh, that series that uh, what on uh, OJ, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And is that where you're getting your uh, no, your no, from? no, 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 no? I'm getting. I was there every day for the trial because I yeah. covered. It. I was a court TV, and I was there from the entire trial. And when you watch that trial, I mean, it, there were a. It was a big split in the newsroom regarding whether he did it or he didn't do it. And I think if you took yourself out of it, because it was hard to think that this guy didn't do it just based on all the information. But if you take yourself out of it, because remember, we're privy to, we were privy to everything, every vaude dire, every sidebar, everything that jurors weren't privy to. Mm. They didn't hear a lot of the stuff that we all heard. Okay, so Based guilty on, or innocent, Ron? Well, I think guilty, but I think properly not guilty because because the 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 dream team was amazing and the prosecution was pathetic. Not so much was pathetic. Yeah. Was pathetic. So what the, what the jury heard and people forget about that. We sat for a year. What was Wait it? A a who's, and a who's, half rat, who's rattling their microphone? Uh, not it, me. It, it, glasses, it, it, it looks like you have your hand on it, Mike. Uh, I don't. No, 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 you don't. I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm down here by my chin. I don't know. It was just some some rattling. Anyway, continue. So so, you know, when you think about everything that we watched for a year and a half, mm -hmm. everything we saw, every minute of that trial, and all the stuff that happened without the jury in the room, and so we were privy to a lot more information than what the jury was, and I think that's, you know, everybody puts the jury down and says they did a bad job but i think with what they saw with the flaws in the in all in the crime scene with the introduction of a blanket over the bodies with who knows what was on that blanket what kind of dna you know you just can't do that 
They lost the evidence. There was a there was a. a yeah, I mean, a, you have to remember account for the blood yeah. samples from 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 the beginning until the end. They they lost that. Oh, this is just a nightmare. What 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 the, uh, what the public doesn't understand is exactly what you said. That what the public saw was an entirely different trial than what the jury saw. Because right. when the when the jury was sent out and stuff was done and sidebars were done and all of that, we saw all that going on. They weren't yeah. privy to that. So they had to make their decision based upon what they knew to be the trial itself. Right? And they were charged by the jury. They were charged by the judge yeah. that this is what you this is the way the, you know, you have to go by the evidence only, not by all the hyperbole. None of that. None of that is evidence. Closing arguments, opening statements is all hyperbole. It's a story made up by each side that you go by the preponderance of evidence. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So made the right. decision. Uh, yes. Yes, Mike. Okay, the other thing is, like you were saying, about the uh, blood splattering and everything else. One, the Los Angeles Police Department did not secure that scene at all. Right, hardly. absolutely, absolutely. They it was blew a it. They blew job. it. They, 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 they blew it, job. but I got to tell you, in those days, and, you, and Rob, since you work for Court TV, you probably know more about this than, uh, than I do. Uh, but uh, what I was able to ascertain was that uh, uh, back in those days, they didn't secure a crime scene like they secure it today. Well, you know, th that was just the beginning of DNA evidence, really. Yeah. Remember how they, in the, if you remember the case, was it Schenck, Barry Schenck, Barry the, uh, Schenck, the yeah. DNA attorney that they hired? Yeah. Remember all of the detail he went into to explain DNA to the, to the, to the court, to the jury? Yeah. Because it was so new. Yeah. And so, hey, so uh, Rob? Yeah, uh, um, the Mark Furman uh, testimony, that's the beginning of the N word, uh, 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 you know, from uh, in media and in society. Uh, did you see that Mark Furman uh, testimony? Absolutely. And uh, so what was the uh, what was the basis of this and, the, you know, the this N word stuff? What do you mean the basis of it? Well, he. Uh, I mean, the they prove the that, that use. They, they prove they that he prove used it. that he was a racist. And yeah. once you've done that, you've lost all the black members of the jury. Yeah. So he lost and he's lost his credibility. But here's a question, though, uh, and and I I do I do believe that the things he was supposed to have said and everything were racist. All right. But uh, did you feel that it was sufficient enough to make him uncredible? In that trial, or, it was all or, it takes it, is it, reasonable it, doubt yeah. on anything, right? Yeah, it's just planting yeah. a, a seed in your head that this guy was. They had videotape of him using the N word. Yeah, you know they. You know, right? But no, it wasn't and somebody. They, wait, and, minute, and wait, 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 wait. Wasn't they it? It, it was actually audio tape, or it might have been videotape of a woman who was writing a, who was writing a book on Furman yes, was. or was interviewing Furman because she was writing a detective novel and wanted to kind of see what a cop does. Yes. And, yes. And, and so he was using these words in that context. Yeah. Uh, but that was enough. I mean, that the they called them the dream team and not without good reason. That was a team of of people who did a really incredible job of getting yeah. getting him off. There was one lawyer named Darden and yeah, Chris Darden. Darden. Yeah, Chris. Well, his brother Larry was a Richmond cop, Larry Darden, and uh, I, I knew him. He was a jerk too, but uh, you know, well, uh, Darden wasn't okay, supposed Chris to Darden be. Was Dar a Darden wasn't supposed to be a jerk at all. No, yeah, no his so. brother. Darden was actually hey. Darden was the uh, sacrificial lamb in a way, in no. that they put him in as the second lead attorney, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so that there would be a black, black face there. Otherwise, they would have never used him. Well, it just it just uh, gave me pause that that uh, this N word stuff with Mark Furman that was sort of the beginning of the social uh, use of uh, the N word, and it didn't didn't it derive from that trial? I don't think so. No, I don't I, think so. That was a very big trial. Uh, yeah, you know, because that's what they used during during the trial. It sort of uh, made remember the, Rodney King. Yeah, you know, which happened a, around before, the same time before OJ. Yeah. I mean, if OJ had anything going for him, it was what Rodney King. 
That's right. That's yeah, right. That's true. It was it was payback for Rodney King to some degree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, it, it also that it, it, the one thing that OJ had going for him, they were never going for the death penalty. They never uh, would have gotten. The death uh, well, they, well, they, they never would have gotten it, but they felt that if they went for the death penalty, they wouldn't have gotten a guilty verdict for OJ because nobody would want to put OJ exactly in on death row. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sports hero, you know, naked gun star. I mean, yeah, man, he's funny. Man. He used to jump on the Hertz commercials. Remember? Yeah, <laughs> he was some football player. For us, man. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Good. He was amazing. Did anybody see the documentary they did on him? That four-part series or something, so. Made in America, the O.J. Simpson story. Really incredible. And and you feel in a way, there there's a moment that I felt sorry for him, and that was that he went from this greatness to this absolute pit, bottom of the pit, you know? See, I don't know that I... I, I, I've I, I, I agree with the verdict, but I don't... I, I, in my heart, believe he did it, so I don't feel sorry for him with that. Because in my heart, I believe he did it. I think he deserved to get off because they didn't prove it. Yeah. And that's the, what our courts are about. You have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, in usually in America, we were used to seeing the black guy get found guilty whether he was right. or not. So in this particular case, uh, but OJ's uh, not black in the society. Well, that, that was that was right. the big question about OJ. The the uh, documentary brings this up that he never did anything to give back to the black community, even though he came from a project. I mean, he had right. every reason to know the plight of blacks in America, and all he did was try and be the 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 black guy who was the white guy's friend. You know, mm-hmm. right? And do you uh, think it was drugs that night with him, maybe? I, I have no idea. No, I don't think so. I don't oh, think I have an necessarily idea. a drug user. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I can't get... Oh, sorry. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. There we go. There we go. Patrick now. I think he may have a solution to the OJ crime. What? And I'll tell you how it could be. What, what's the solution? I think when OJ passes away mm-hmm. with, the, with the brain damage for the NFL players, yeah. I wonder if they would donate OJ's brain so the doctor could look at it. I yep. bet you he has that... Whatever you know, you know it, it, I agree you, with you. It, this is a very interesting point that has been, again, brought up recently, and that is that maybe O.J. did have a brain injury of some sort over the years of playing football. So all those concussions, they never knew about it, right? And, right, and, they didn't and, know it back in the 90s. And perhaps right. if, if they weren't trying to get him off by saying he didn't do it, okay, and that he, he was just framed, the other, the other defense could have been brain damage from all that football playing. I mean, and diminished capacity. What? Did you say I killed himself? What would you uh, say? So what'd you say? Wait, hold, hold on a second. I can't. I can't hear Phil. What? Mind you, uh, uh, I'm saying I can't hear Phil. Yes, oh, Phil. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Tony said uh, Junior Sehow killed himself, and that's that's true. Uh, uh, you know, talking about. Uh, I didn't know that OJ got hit that much. He was uh, a running back, Phil. Yeah, those guys get rocked. Yeah, yeah really. Uh, in talking about brain damage, our uh, friend John McCain uh, has yeah. brain cancer, and uh, is he a friend of yours? Is he a friend of yours? Huh? Is he a friend of yours? No. Oh, you said our friend John McCain, and I figured, <laughs> yeah, you know, our him personally. friend John McCain. Uh, you know, I'm being facetious, but uh, because I don't like John McCain, I don't think he's a real Republican. Oh, but he's think, well, I like John McCain because I don't think he's a real Republican. <laughs> right. So. I, I like John McCain because I believe he's a thinking Republican. Yeah. By yeah. the way, I welcome. Think thinks pa- like a Democrat. Welcome to Patrick. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> hi, Patrick. The uh, so the John McCain thing—they're saying that at his age, that what he has, he's probably got a ten percent chance of living. That uh, fake. Hey, he's eighty years old. He has a twenty percent chance of living. <laughs> y- you know, yes, Patrick. All right. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Oh, and it, <laughs> with the help of God. With the help no, of God. No, uh, <laughs> John McCain's a fighter, and the cancer picked the wrong guy to fight with. John McCain's going to win. And I went, mm, no. No, 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 no. 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 Yes, uh, yes uh, uh, Scott. Scott's got his hand up. Yes, Scott. <laughs> hey, has anybody wait noticed minute, wait, 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 Scott had his Scott, Scott had his hand up. I went, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> they said the same thing about Jimmy Carter with his brain cancer, too, didn't they? His He's went, back in the hospital. 
What? Uh, he collapsed uh, last week on a, uh, yes. a habitat. He, he, he was building a house. He was building He's a house, and it was come on. So so it, it, so it, it, hold on a second. Uh, they <laughs> take the old codger. They put a hammer in his hand. They take a picture, and then they wheel him out. No, of he there. actually yeah, goes yeah, in yeah, there and does some work. He's actually He's ninety. He's ninety some odd years old. He's still building. Still having work all day. <laughs> no, he, yeah. he survived yeah. the brain cancer. Yeah. That has nothing to do with whether Trump, he Trump spent, brain cancer. Trump, Trump spent his whole your, life building your, homes for, for... Well, he for, just collapsed oh, again, and uh, I, I don't know why he collapsed. Here. It wasn't from building the house, because they don't make him carry lumber, you know? But, oh, I uh, don't know. Were you there? He was well, hydrated. He, he, he might be there. He might, he might be... Climbing ladders and putting up no, a chimney for all they, you to do, Patrick dumbass. Lumber, but they wouldn't make uh, Carter do it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, wait a minute. Let, one at a time, please. Patrick. De dehydration. It was dehydration. Yeah. I heard her dehydration. That's why one of the worst worst things that could happen to the elderly is dehydration. Yes. I yes. And he, and he was back, uh, what was it, the next day at church teaching Sunday school. Oh. Yep. You know. Uh, I mean, well, how dare you put down such a really good human being, Phil? Exactly. Had he a good peanut farmer. <laughs> no. He's, he's, a, he's a better human being than any of us are. Exactly. And he's a great, you had, you had a great father, uh, peanut farmer. Yeah. Speak yeah. for yourself, Alex. I'm, I'm a much better human being. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> hey, has anybody noticed? Hey, listen, Mark? listen. You know me, Patrick. I'm a prick. You know, I'm and I'm a, prof I'm a professional prick, I might add. Yes. Uh, well, who is saying? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, has anybody uh, wrong, wrong. has anybody noticed that Mike Pence, when he introduces, anytime he talks about the president, but especially when he introduces him, he almost eulogizes him every time. Really? He's getting ready. It's, He's yeah, getting I, ready. I, 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 no, no, no. I mean, I, I, maybe I use the wrong word, eulogizing, because when you eulogize somebody, you normally did. you sing their praises. He's practicing you know, for the funeral. He just he lays it on so thick anytime he talks about Trump that it's sickening. It's well, you, almost well, like you, you remember that 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 uh, thing where he had all his members of his cabinet assembled and yeah. they all said these wonderful things about him. And I, uh, it was almost as though they had been hypnotized. Yes, he is one of the finest human beings I know. Right. Yes, uh, Patrick. Hey. Uh, my guess is there's an agreement among the president and his cabinet. Either all of you give me rim jobs or you speak nicely of me. Personally, I would speak his praise too because I don't want my tongue getting anywhere near his asshole. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, I, I just looked up the Carter thing. It mm. seems as though it was the Canadians that did this to him. It happened in oh, Winnipeg, Canada. So, so much for their health care system. They're trying to kill our president. He's only 92 years old, you know. Yes, yes. He's, he's, he's probably going to be dead tomorrow. But, that was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Mike. The vice president's doing that. He's getting everybody ready just in case Trump does uh, kick off. He's practicing for the, for the, for the eulogy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all he's doing. Yeah. And Carter, 92... You know, he's in better shape than probably all of us will be at 92. Well, no, he's not in that great shape. But he's, you know, he's still... He's I would, still say, I would say even Phil is in better shape than I Jimmy don't know Carter. about that. I had a Pilates class day before yesterday. <laughs> there was some uh, old fat ladies in there doing a lot better than I was. Oh, okay. But well. still, Carter is still at 92, still running. Oh, no, so no, but he's, he just happens to be a decent human being. You know, yes, no, I agree with you. He wasn't a great president. I even told him that to his face. I said, you know, I honestly believe you're. I said to him, you're a better, you're a better, you're better now that you're no longer president and doing more important things. And he thanked me for saying that. You know, he, <laughs> felt, back in he felt it was true. <laughs> you know, I said, thank God you're out of office. <laughs> well, we could have voted for his brother. For his president. Oh, he's always in trouble. Wasn't his he? beard was pretty good. He's dead, though. Oh, yeah. He yeah. Yeah. He died a long time ago. Yeah, he was an alcoholic. Yeah. He, he, you know, he, he had a problem with him. He had a real problem with him. Uh, yeah. And, and, well, he was a lobbyist for Libya. Mm -hmm. 
Really? You know, yeah, yeah. They uh, he was uh, a paid uh, a paid lobbyist for Libya. Anyway, um, so uh, uh, getting back to OJ, I think that uh, he should get out. Uh, he's going to. They say if he gets out, he will have a reality show. Uh, See and, now that the Goldmans can now attack. that that the Goldmans can go get the money from. Yeah, you know. So maybe he doesn't need to do something like that, or if he needs to do it, is because he wants to be on TV. But if he's getting if he's getting what twenty thousand a month from the NFL, I only heard the pension was twelve hundred dollars a month. No, it was twenty G's. Really? Because I heard today that he has a twenty uh, twelve thousand dollar a month pension or something. But that may be another one. Yeah. What? Is. Maybe being a broadcaster, probably. And they, I don't think they can get his Social Security, which I'm sure he gets now. Say, whose dog is that? That's mine. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, mute. No, you don't have to mute. Just gas him. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. By the way, I want to tell you. I want to tell you something. Last night, I at the end of the show, I showed my cat. Or not my cat, the cat we're cat sitting for. Already I'm calling it my cat. Oh, the cats. <laughs> and I wanted people, to, you guys, to see the cat and the camera and so on. And I'm finishing the show and I'm playing the theme and I say goodbye to you guys. And then I go over and I have to like turn off the uh, audio stream to, to, uh, to, to the internet, right? And lower, so I lower the theme first and then I kill that, right? And as I'm trying to kill that, the cat is suddenly walking on my on my keyboard and is causing all kinds of havoc. And I can't move my, my mouse because the, the cat is in the way. And now I'm having to bat the cat off while I'm trying to turn off the stream and bring this fucking cat just sabotaged me. Just knew exactly what, what, that, what she was doing. Yes, Phil. All right. Uh, this is a uh, finance uh, magazine on OJ. Mm -hmm. uh, 25000 a month NFL. And he has a personal pension in which he invested $5 million, uh, many years ago into Screen Actors Guild. Uh, oh, he has a Screen Actors Guild okay. pension and a personal pension. Yeah. Uh, put $5 million in. So, so the, the question is, can, I don't think they can touch any of those pensions. No. So he, 25 G's NFL, that's a month. Yeah. Uh, whatever he gets from SAG. Mm -hmm. And uh, that could and be, that could be, a, that, could be uh, that could be a good, uh, it depends. He didn't do that many movies. He did. Well, hey, you, you did, uh, you know, you did, uh, you know, some spots and some radio programs and, and you're getting a G a month. Early on, I get about, I get about $900 a month from AFTRA. Uh, oh, well, and, I got to believe that he's probably get years more ago. than that. Yeah, I mean, if I had been with after all those years, I'd, I'd be making, I'd be bring, taking home, uh, God, I'd be bringing home five thousand a month or something like that. You yeah. know. Uh, Does he also get the uh, uh, when he was a broadcasting deal? That's also? a sag thing, I that's, would imagine. Yeah, that's after. No, no, no. yeah, no. Uh, Chances uh, are he's not in any union. Well, no, no, no. no. If he was in after, no, he would have had to have been an after in order to do the TV stuff back in those sure. days. And so, therefore, sure. uh, the the yeah, the, 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 whoever he was working for put into pension and welfare for him. Well, so, what about the? Uh, wait a minute. What happened? Everybody suddenly went. Uh, yeah, we're went, back. But now we're back. What was that? It's weird. Glitch. It was, uh, it's freaky. It was Tony, very you do? freaky. <laughs> yeah, we're, st we're still on. Everybody's back. It's just like everybody went blank, and then all of a sudden, the fastest back. everybody came back. I've, I've never yeah. seen I've never seen that happen. Well, we we found out before that I could actually hang up on you guys, uh, or or stop whatever, and 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 then come back to you, and you're still there. I I could kill Skype here, go away, take a vacation, come back. Turn Skype back on, and there you all be talking to each other, doing a better show than I can do. So, you know. Uh, Wait, so he gets the, top of that, doesn't he get a pension from uh, Ertz, rent a car, plus no, other no, commercials? No, 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 that, that, that would come under either SAG or AFTRA, probably in that case. SAG, I would imagine SAG. Commercials. Yeah, SAG. Yeah. 
But now it, does, it, it doesn't that. it doesn't matter anymore because SAG and AFTRA are the same unions now. He, and was, on, he was on the board of uh, he was on the board of directors of Hertz at one point. I don't know that that gets him anything. Well, he wasn't eligible for Social Security when he first was arrested in 2008 because he's 70 now. Mm -hmm. So that means nine years. He was 61. So now he uh, he can collect Social Security at 70, which is uh, the maximum a rate that you can get mm -hmm. uh, at uh, uh, for Social Security. That'd be about uh, $2,300 $2, a month. Yeah. No, not 25 23 something like that. 23 yeah. Okay, so that's... Plus the know. back pay. Plus that'll be back, wouldn't it? Back uh, pay. So in other, words, in other words, these are all things that the Goldmans can't lay their hands on. Yeah. Right. And consequently, uh, it's uh, pretty cool. You know, he's... he's he can live comfortable he, he, and oh, yeah. off. Yeah. If he's getting, Do you know what Green's fees are now? He's going to go through that money like uh, like a French whore through well, perfume. I, I don't think number one, if he gets twenty five thousand a month, as you say, from the NFL, well, and also that's Sports for, Illustrated says that's for starters, and then you yeah. add into that the SAG and the AFTRA stuff. That's probably, I would say, somewhere another ten grand. And then he's got the five million that he invested years ago in a personal pension that has to now, have increased. Can they, can they touch that pension though? Is the question. No, it's uh, I don't think so. And uh, then of course he's got Social Security. So, so basically, yeah, he's, basically, he's doing fine. they have a guy who's on a fixed income, none of the income of which can be touched <laughs> by the Goldman. So they're they're up shit creek. You know, they they just got his Heisman and that's about it. You know, or somebody's got his Heisman. Yeah, that sports memorabilia guy in Nevada. <laughs> yeah, that's what he. I think it was one of the things the guy stole from. Him. I'm not sure, but yeah. pr probably. Yeah, yeah, Am I right? Pa Patrick goes. Yeah, that was one of the things that got stolen. That he supposedly right. was going to get. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's that's another another thing that they're coming down on the black man. Uh, you know, because this Heisman look, look. sounds like a it, Nazi to me. Uh, <laughs> it, it is funny. It, it's funny how fast. O.J. Simpson became black. In other words, before the day before he was arrested, nobody ever thought of O.J. Simpson as black. The black community didn't feel he was doing shit for them. You know, they didn't relate to him as being a black guy. And all of a sudden, because of the Rodney King preceding it and then this thing, it's they're going after the black man. And you know something? They're not, they weren't that wrong in that... Uh, he wasn't being treated like the white guy he'd been all those years. <laughs> Let me put it that way, you know. Uh, do you remember how many uh, whites and how many blacks were on his jury? I I don't think it was disproportionate. Okay, I think it was, mm. I I think there were less blacks than there were whites. I think yeah. it was like three black ladies on the uh, jury, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember now. What uh, what was the actual count on the jury? Does anybody know about who wanted to find him guilty and who wanted to find him not guilty? Because no. yeah, um, I I don't remember what the uh, what the proportion was on that. We should hold Rob to that standard since he was working that whole thing. The, yes. Yeah, well, Bob, if you don't know, then then you're not allowed to be on here anymore. <laughs> oh, were, oh, that's according a, that's, that's according tough. to what I just Googled, the yeah. final jury composition was nine blacks, one Hispanic, and two whites. Oh, really? Huh. Yep. Yeah, um, I, I by sex it was, it was ten women and two men. Now, how again? You want to talk about a lousy uh, prosecution? How'd they let that happen? Oh, there you go. <laughs> How'd they let that happen? Now I remember uh, watching all of those days sitting there while they were picking the jury. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. I think Marsha's perm was too tight, so she wasn't thinking correctly. Who was she banging? Uh, she Darden. Banging or, uh, the judge. I think she was. Wasn't she fucking Darden? I thought so. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it was Darden. At, at least in the thing. in the in the movie they did for television, there's the indication that they had a kind of romantic thing going. I don't know. Yeah, she was she was separated from her husband. Yeah, not at the time. I don't think. Yeah, I yeah. think she was. And they were separated. But she should have went after Ito. Oh, yeah. There's a guy who disappeared. Yeah. 
that's why I brought him up because nobody even, I mean, you hear about Marsha Clark on occasion. You heard about Johnny Cochran all the time, even after the trial, because he was kind of uh, Al Sharp. You know, he was in the spotlight no matter if he was on a case or not. But you're right, Judge Ito, he just kind of. He's probably living in Hawaii right now. Yeah, who was the DNA guy? That uh, uh, it was a Chinese guy, also, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, what's his name? Michael something, Michael Chang, or something mm-hmm. like that. Does that sound right? I never forget when he went on the run. I was watching the Nick game, and they cut away from the Knicks. Oh, with I, was the like, I thought he was going to blow his brains out right on the highway. I said, "Oh my god!" Well, the Knicks were in the finals that year. So did Al Collins. I mean, he was worried because OJ's had the gun, and he was going to like shoot himself. You know. Yeah. It's like riveting TV. You know, I, I, here, here, here's where OJ went wrong. Okay? It, a couple of places he went wrong. Uh, and this is after the trial. After the trial, he should have laid low. He should have not been as public as he was. Laid low for two, three years. Instead, he was on golf courses. He was saying, I'm going to go chase the guys who killed my wife. I'm, blah, blah, blah. And he I'm going to put up money to find them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's going to find them. Yeah. Uh, he knew that would never and, be collected. And, 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 and he, <laughs> he should have just laid low. Just, Isn't there a book, too? Uh, yeah, no, no what, what happened did. was, no, my, my, uh, my friend, uh, what's her name? Now I'm going my friend, and I can't remember her name, uh, the publisher. Uh, put out a book on him called If I Did It, Here's How I Would Have Done It. Okay. And uh, the Goldman family wanted all the, they, wa- they wanted that book. They got the rights to it. And then they wrote their own stuff into it. Uh, it didn't sell at all. Uh, uh, but it, it, it was, um, uh, it, 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 it wasn't a confession. It was a, if I did it, here's how I would have done it. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was a brilliant thing on her part. I mean, if that book had been allowed to go out as was and promoted, it would have done very, very well. Um, but she's the guy who did the Howard Stern book, and she did. A, she was always very good at, at uh, promoting. And what happened was um, she was partners with uh, Rupert Murdoch, in her publishing company. They bought up kind of her publishing company and she ran it. And uh, because of all of this, they fired her because she did that book. And then she said, I, you can't fire me. And she sued Rupert Murdoch and walked away with about $10 million. Wow. Um, so, um, <laughs> Judith Regan, Judith yeah. Regan. And, and, and Judith, I love Judith. She's great uh, because I, I she used to go with the partner of Rudy Giuliani, the former police chief of New York City. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. Bernie uh, 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 Carrick, yeah. Bernard Carrick. She used to go with Bernard Carrick. One night I'm walking down the street with her and I said, Judith, don't think it wrong of me to ask you, but you know, you're really an intelligent woman. You're an attractive woman. You're, uh, I like you a lot, so I gotta ask you this question because the only thing about you that bothers me: how could you fuck Bernard Carrick? <laughs> because he was a disgusting-looking human being. And she said, uh, "Well, she says I like power. I'm attracted to power." And he was a powerful man. She said, "I know I." shouldn't have i know he sucks you know she, and she started telling me stuff about about their dealings and uh, and and this is where i've gotten my impression over the years about our former mayor uh and the kind of stuff they were into and i said uh, i said to her at one point i said well were they into some nefarious stuff and she went you 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 don't want to know is i think the way she put it she said uh but uh, that's where i got my opinion of uh, of, of the former mayor. Where, where did Brian go? I just brought him oh. on. Let me see here. Brian, are you there anywhere, Brian? I don't know what happened to him. Let me call him, okay? All right, we'll, we'll just call him. Anyway, um, but anyway, Judith, it was a very smart book for her to bring out, but it got, it got her into a mess of trouble. And- uh, million. Huh? 
He got her 10 well, million. Well, yeah, but it took a, quite a while for her to get that 10 million. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway. Hello, I'm Brian. My Bluetooth headset here. Give me it. Oh. That's why I had to call oh, it. For some reason, it didn't take. Yeah, you sound much better tonight. The, the other, oh, really? The other way you were talking to us, it always sounded kind of tinny. Mm. Now, now it sounds really good. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, uh, my problem is I can't hear you as clearly. Okay. Well, my other problem with with, uh, with with OJ was that he should have disappeared off the off the, off the map for a while, you know, and then slowly made appearances and, uh, uh, you know... Didn't On not, charity stuff. Yeah, charity. Uh, he, was, he was locked up for a long time, and he just wanted to get back to life as he knew it, getting on a golf course. And he wanted, And everybody shunned him and shied away from him because it wasn't politically correct. And, uh, I mean, I think yeah. he just wanted his life back. Yeah, I think he, re well, for one thing, he realized he didn't have his uh, life back because uh, anywhere he went, he was O.J. Simpson, the guy who killed his wife. And right? he was dating some hot model at the time, and she dumped him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, What's her name? But, I mean, yeah. there, there was a lot of baggage there. Tawny Catane? Maybe. I don't remember Tawny Catane, I believe. Huh? Was it Tawny Catane? Another person I can't stand. Yeah, it was Tony Catane. <laughs> I did. Dating. I did a thing with her, and she was the worst. She was just the worst. Um, uh, I'm. I remember what was it? What was the situation? Uh, oh, oh, I know what it was. I had. I. I was doing a show. We were doing the show out of L.A. on on uh, the lot at movie lot, uh, and I can't remember what the promotion was, but we were promoting some. I think we were promoting WKRP in Cincinnati or something. The return of it. And um, so we're doing our show, and I, I've got uh, Ron Jeremy on. And as long as I've got Ron on, I just keep him there. Because I used to, when I have guests on, if they wanted to stick around and be around when the other guests came on, they, I would say, fine, you know, it's okay. So Ron Jeremy was on. And so now I see off in the corner Tony Catane, who we'd booked for the show. And I said, uh, and, and uh, uh, I go to a break, and my producer comes over to me and says, uh, Tawny Catane will not come on as long as um, uh, Ron Jeremy is on. And I, I thought about it for a second. I said, she what? He said, she doesn't want to be on the same show with Ron Jeremy. I said... Well, you know, I've known Ron Jeremy a lot longer than I've ever known Tawny Catane, which is nothing. And uh, I'm sticking with my friend. Tell her to go fuck herself. And they go over and they tell her exactly what I said. And, I, and she was behind this like potted plant or something like a tree. And the tree started shaking. <laughs> and that was the last I ever saw of Tawny Catane. Don't you love when you tell somebody, hey, you know, in kind of in confidence, tell them to go fuck themselves, and they actually go and do it yeah. instead of saying, well, hey, in it's this not case, I have no, I, I, I hope they did. Okay. So I, so I have a cousin who lives in Southern California, and she's got two stepdaughters. And these stepdaughters are really, really hot girls. They're in their, well, this is going back now to the mid 2000s, 2006, maybe. And, um, they, one of them, actually worked for Tawny Catane. She had a, uh, a, like a boutique someplace, you know, on the beach in whatever town in, in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And said that this woman, she, the, the, the stepdaughter, her stepdaughter said, this, she's a mess. She's always in bed. She's depressed. She's got really, just her life fell apart, Tawny Catane. Who knows why? Well, but, I mean, uh, did she go with OJ? Because I think maybe yeah. she did. She yeah, went with yeah, OJ. I this think, was after. I think that was uh, yes. I remember later on telling the story and saying this from the woman who won't go on with Ron Jeremy, but will go out with OJ Simpson. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it was, and it was after the uh, the. Well, uh, uh, was it after the no? It was well, I mean, trial, I mean, but after the incident. I don't have a lot of great virtues, but if I have one great virtue, is that I'm loyal. Uh, and and I've known I knew Ron for years, and Ron had been a friend of mine, and I wasn't about ready to kick uh, him off the show for this fucking. Bimbo. Can you imagine if she came over to your apartment and she brought OJ for dinner? Everybody would probably clear out. <laughs> 
<laughs> like she says, Tony's coming over. Well, not, next, she wouldn't know, come I'm over to my like, house for dinner after I told her to go fuck herself. I sincerely <laughs> doubt that. You know. That's true. But anyway, so you bring her yeah. home. But uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I just think that uh, I, I think this whole thing. I felt it was terrible what they did to him in in Las Vegas. I thought, in a way, he had every right to try and go and get his stuff. I think the fact that they brought a gun uh, and, and and scared these people and, uh, you know, did it that way. If he had just gone in there and said, hey, you've got my stuff and I want it and just acted like that he could hit him at any moment, you know. Uh, He's big enough. He's <laughs> going for the Heisman Trophy, I think. Yeah, uh, as, uh, and, uh, you know, these guys had literally stolen items of OJ's. He should have just went to the cops. That's I mean, good. I know they're not friends, but shit. He keeps always doing it. He wasn't a big fan of him at that point. Uh, yeah, at that point, uh, yeah. He was, <laughs> Hello, like, John Rockwell. Shit, like, yeah, he, yeah, he, was, like he, wasn't, he wasn't a big and fan. He is stupid, though. <laughs> and there's always the looming question as to whether or not he has that uh, NFL brain disease. I, you know? I bet you, if I had a bet, I bet you he does. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, coupled with probably his... Who knows? They said he had a drug problem too with the brain. Who knows? Maybe he does the drugs with his son. Uh, drugs. Oh, right? another. Do you think he'll ever confess on his deathbed? Like, listen, I did it because I was just, I had a problem. I feel with the brain. Uh, 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 Phil uh, manages, in spite of the fact that he's on with me, to also send me messages on Facebook, <laughs> which I don't see till I turn around. So this one is, oh, it's just a few seconds ago, actually. What is Yeah, it? I thought you'd enjoy that. What is it? Uh, it's a picture of the uh, Cal Neva Resort with uh, Frank uh, Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis, uh, Peter Lawford, and uh, yeah. Joey Bishop. Uh, pictures the of the sign. Yeah. Uh, uh, a friend of mine just posted it. Oh, I was uh, probably there when they took that picture. Yeah, well, uh, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I was probably there when they took that picture was uh, my father played that gig uh, yeah. with the Rat That's, Pack at, uh, at, at the, Cal Neva. You get a kick out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. The Cal, <laughs> Cal Neva was a, a lodge they had where it was called Cal Neva because it's, it's on the, it on was the right border. on the border. In fact, yeah. the, 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 the main room where they did the show every night and so on, the South Side room. Well, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't called. That was South Side room. It was in the South Side. It was called the uh, State Line room. And right through the middle of the room is a dotted line that is the border between California and, and Nevada. And and on one side, you could gamble, and on the other side, I guess you could dance. You know, that was about it. You dance, right? Well, there was. So, uh, I stayed there one night. Yeah. And there was so. I couldn't breathe. It was during the summertime, and the pine trees or whatever they had there. There was. It was so. It was so bad. And I don't have allergies. I couldn't breathe. I actually had to leave there at three in the morning. I just. Uh, uh, I drove home. Yeah. Well, I, I I had allergies, but I never got them up there. Do you know there are no, no rattlesnakes up there? Yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, no rattlesnakes. No, they can't. No, come on, no, they got rattlesnakes no, everywhere. No, not there. Listen, I know more about that place than you do. I practically lived up there. Why not? Every because year. they had mafia. No, the reason they didn't have rattlesnakes is uh, above that at that high in altitude, the rattlesnakes can't survive. They really? don't exist that high. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, well, maybe oh. below. Maybe however, below we did. However, we did have a problem with pterodactyls. So <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, uh, I didn't I didn't know that about the uh, snakes. I know Hawaii they don't have uh, any poisonous snakes. That's right. And um, Ireland and course. Ireland, yeah. <laughs> no, it's no snakes in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. right. I think yeah. St. Patrick uh, drove them all out. Right? No, but I think there's a reason why they tell that legend is because I think there aren't snakes in Ireland or something like that. They got rid yeah, of. I mean, it wasn't you know people who aren't Catholic. What? People who were Protestants. Wait, wait, wait Protestants. a minute. Let, 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 let Brian talk. What what did you say, Pat? Uh, 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 Brian? <laughs> Brian, basically, I, I read that it's basically a metaphor. I got rid of the snakes, uh, being that they are not of the same religion, nor of the same religious denomination as St. Patrick. 
Oh, I see. Okay. So he drove the snakes would be the people who are the non-believers or whatever. Probably I have uh, uh, my uh, like ex-husband went to Ireland on vacation for a week. And they, uh, I find it interesting based on their stories that uh, we're at, we were talking about in Ireland, a country that has a climate similar to my own, where I'm from, New York, perhaps, but yet it has uh, a very large uh, seal population to not have actual snakes. Wow. Okay. Hmm. We learn something every night on this program. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that come out of Ireland that are allegories, like Gulliver's Travels, which, uh, you know, is an allegory about the coining of copper money. And it was actually a protest. I, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was, was, Gulliver's, was Jonathan Swift Irish? Uh, the, but it was a fight between the Irish and the English because the English were trying to coin copper money and the Irish didn't uh, believe that that was money. And I saw so, a video, uh, with uh, Ted Danson in 1997 of uh, that, that interpretation of Gulliver's Travels. And the introduction stated that uh, 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 Jonathan Swift was Irish. I, huh. Okay. I, I, I didn't know he was Irish. It doesn't sound like yeah. an Irish name. You but, know, you think it's a kid's fairy tale, but it's really, uh, well, really it's, a protest. It's, it's and, meant to, uh, no, it's a, what it oh. is, it's a parody. It's, you know. Uh, it's an allegory. Which, yeah, but, which no, group it's was the Irish? The Yahoos or the... I mean, the, well, that's the, 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 the horse the little, ones. Yeah, the little Pusians and you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And who were the ta yeah. tall ones? The Brobdig Nags or something? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah uh, yes, uh, 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 t uh, t uh, Tony. Yeah. I'm going to turn in for the night because I had a long day in that shit box, Alex. In, in your shit box, you mean? It was 100 degrees. So I was kind of wiped out. <laughs> oh, wow. I got two more days of work. It's anyway. kind of getting hot in here too. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, New York's got so it. Tomorrow. Yeah, this is this is going to be a good month for me having to pay the electric bill. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, I just got my first estimate. My, You know, the air conditioner went out in my showroom. Mm -hmm. So I finally got a guy in to give me an estimate, $17,000. I told him, well, thanks, and now I'll, t I'll find out what everybody else in the world charges because this guy, uh, you know, was selling me the Rolls Royce of... Uh, <laughs> Of systems, and I, you yeah, know, I don't have place, the heart so. to tell them, hey, I want to get out of this store. I just got to restore the air conditioner and make yeah. it work. Uh, 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 John, uh, you have uh, maybe a yeah. suggestion, like Someone, you're going to come over. Well, and it's 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 sort of a parallel to his story about the very expensive thing. When we were doing Midnight Blue, we did a story about the guy that had the the this guy in Brooklyn that had the, this fantastic motorcycle. He did all that, and he was and he was able to do it because he was considered the the most expensive plumber in the city. And he lived about a block. His plumbing place is about two blocks from where I lived in Brooklyn. And we didn't know who he was. Remember this guy? He had like this multi, you know, super over tricked out motorcycle and was going around with it. I way don't, back I don't really was, remember. But then we I liked it. It was I, one of the I, few non-sex related things we did. But he was just so off over the top. But the fact he could he, he had this incredibly expensively done up motorcycle was that he was considered the most expensive plumber in New York City. I mean, you know, from what I gather, I mean, he wasn't in the, the, the most expensive part of town, but he obviously, you know, knew, used his money to he, build. He knew how to, how to plumb for money. Yes, so you had your hand up, yeah. Mike? So I'll see you what I did was, when I got my air conditioning here at the house replaced, I got three bids, and the uh, third bid was the cheapest one of them all. The other two, God, my ankle was like an arm and a leg. Like, you know, take my first child, put it, you know, put it out in the middle of the street somewhere to sell. Yeah, well, you know what I so would suggest, it, Phil, and this is just a suggestion. Yeah. And and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, oh, say, uh, uh, Patrick. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, don't try to replace your air conditioner during the summer. Yeah, really. Except the customers come in, it's 100 degrees out. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, what I'm saying uh, is if you do it in the middle of winter, true. this guy is dying. <laughs> for, this guy will be dying for business. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, the guy had in there $4,200 for permits and engineering. I said, mm -hmm. look, you're taking one out, you're putting one what? in. What the hell? They probably you see already the have the permit. It's, 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 I mean, it's, it's, I'll tell you something. I, 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 when I was out in Fire Island, uh, yeah. the, the the person who owns the home, she uh, she has there's a second little kind of like uh, two story building in the back where she has mm -hmm. a little studio upstairs. 
but they're redoing it and they really don't have any way to get up there because they removed the stairs. And she said, well, yeah, I'm going to be buying a circular staircase that we're just going to go out and buy whole and then they just put it up there. And I said, why are you doing that? Why aren't you just building the steps? She said, if I build the steps, I have to get a permit from the city. I have to get an okay on the plans, a whole bunch of stuff. If I get just a circular staircase, have them bring it over and plop it down, she said, I don't have to do anything. And, yeah. and that's exactly Where's what Trump you do? when you need him to get rid of yeah. regulations. Well, I, I've yeah. got two units. I've got a three thousand BTU unit on uh, on the roof, and I got a four thousand BTU unit. So I have two units that uh, and two thermostats. And so what I've done is the three thousand one, which is on where my office is. Uh, I bought these big thirty inch fans, uh, industrial fans, and I blow the cold air into the showroom from my office. My okay. office is is like an ice box, but I'm trying to blow the uh, the air into well, the showroom. Hey, well, uh, Can you imagine this place? He's got fans all over the place. I can't imagine. It's like a maze with, with like three hundred. Showroom the blow job. Good three, for you. What is? How many BTU did you say? I believe it's three thousand and a four thousand. It can't be. No, it can't be. Because this is, five, is, like the is, there, is there another denomination? Uh, 30,000 and 40,000. How about, how about tons? Industrial yeah. tons, how yeah. About three tons. Ton and four tons. That's what yeah, it is. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, tons. Yeah. So I got three tons. So and in other words, when you turn those things on, does all the electricity go out of the rest of the <laughs> neighborhood? <laughs> Yeah. Pretty much, it, it runs me about seven hundred dollars a month to uh, to run uh, I'll show, on electricity. I'll show you how well wired this place is. When I turn this uh, air conditioner on, it's only five thousand BTU. Uh, yeah. The lights dim for a second. Mm. Uh, you know. Yeah. So on I don't. The Empire know State Building. Use. I have tons. That's. Yeah. that's what what'd you say, Rob? On the Empire State Building. On the Empire State. The building. lights dim. The right. lights dim. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I. Uh, I'm There's thinking, only two things that dim it. Since His I, air conditioner and an asning at Sing Sing yeah, when they well, execute well, somebody I took, in the electric. Yeah, exactly. I took my ten thousand, my ten thousand off of the circuit it's on, ran a long extension cord, nailed it down, going to another plug that's on a, a, a completely another uh, thing in the apartment, so that no, they're the not circuit, on the right. same, uh, not on the same main circuit, circuit right, downstairs yeah. in the basement. Okay, they're two yeah. different. So now I think if I've got a 5,000 here, since I'm not running, I was running this one and that one at the same time, then if I ran the microwave, of course, the whole apartment went black. What I've <laughs> got to do with this one is I think I can go up to maybe an 8,000 and not you know, be tempting the fates because I don't have the other air conditioner on it. So, Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say good night then. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night. Okay. Good Goodbye. Night. Good night. See you later. <laughs> okay. There goes uh, there goes Tony. Let me get rid of his uh, little picture of that. There we go. Of, of, that, of that dog. Uh -huh. Another dog that should be gassed. Mm. Uh, let me see. Here. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, Alex, they should transport you bet in time back 70 years and gas you along with the rest of the guys. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> you want a totally different topic? I can bring Wait, one man, in. Hold on, a second. hold on a second. <laughs> Listen, you fat turd. Uh, <laughs> fat turd. <laughs> you fat, you, you, you fat uh, I, I can't, I have to use the word homosexual, I guess. <laughs> I, 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 that baggity fuck, whatever the fuck you want. I, okay, to, you, you can say it I'm for me. I'm giving Happy. you the, the words to insult me with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, right. They're my used to. My yeah. But you see, in today's in today's super uh, 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 politically, call, politically correct uh, <laughs> yeah, situation, mm -hmm. if I right. call you a faggoty fuck, uh, I will then get calls from faggoty fucks. So you know, I mean. You are. Well, fucking no. tell those faggoty fucks to go fuck themselves. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, John. Alex, you do you do remember that back once again? I'm I'm bringing up midnight blue things again. Yeah. Uh, my roommate ball. at the time, who was gay, yes. uh, was actually part of. We actually got involved in working with you guys. You do before I even did, uh, along Castro. with Dave and a couple other people. Bob. Bob Castro. Bob, uh, Bob Castro is a very nice guy. He was half black, half Puerto Rican, and all gay. Mm -hmm. And we took care. The, well, I, I and, and often we, mentioned, he was an editor. I and often mentioned that we labeled him. Well, wait a what did I, we label him in yeah. the credits? Uh -huh. We labeled him editor and house faggot. 
Did and we really? he loved it. And <laughs> nobody complained. And it was uh, in 1976. It was That's not hilarious. considered all that, <laughs> at least in in New York. You know, but he was part was, Spanish. He was but, part black. He was part. Yeah. He was gay. He's so he kicked off all gay. the various things we needed for equal opportunity at the midnight. Oh, he court. was everything. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing he wasn't was cripple, right? <laughs> no, no, he was he. He walked pretty Just, well. <laughs> he was, yeah. Yeah. No, he, he walked no, no. very well. But he, uh, uh, now, but 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 he was. Uh, that was part of the. And, I mean, I mean was on, he was, was on the really, credits for for a year. For I've a month, got, I've got as to long say that there. I'd met, I'd known gay people all my life. I mean, I had started out working in the theater, and so I, I you know, I, I was always. Uh, some people thought I was gay because I hung around with a lot of gay people, but I never mm. went met one quite as unrelentingly gay as Bob. Oh yeah, true. I, I mean, true. this guy. And I go, roomed with him, and that was even more interesting. I mean, this guy. Would At go least down, he was very nice and and did most of his. Uh, his sexual activity out on, uh, you know, 14th Street in the truck well, somewhere. Trucks, or whatever, the, that's why he would go down to the truck. He didn't and bring just them home. Fuck anonymous people, right? Yeah, right. And and well, I never knew. I knew never knew a gay because person. he ended up getting. Uh, uh, wait, no, it wasn't it wasn't AIDS. He thought he he got AIDS. He died. He died in '89. Wait, wait, in, this uh, is August of '89. And, or no, July. Wait actually, wait, 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 oh wait, my wait, God. Wait, hold on a second. He died J on J July 20th of '89, which is tomorrow. John, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sometimes when you're talking, you probably mutes, Once, you, yeah. mutes me. Uh, uh, he, uh, I believe, when he died, that was before the age of AIDS. Well, it was and just about, no, it was 89. It was 89, so it was right in the middle of it. Wait a minute. And he thought, thought he had it. I thought he died while I was still he, there, but no, that would have to no, be yeah, the age of AIDS. It was later. He had gotten a job, which was amazing, <laughs> as a, at a, at a phone answering do, you know phone service or whatever. Yeah. And one of the guys there, I was going to move into the city, which uh, into the, the city into yeah. Manhattan, which I ended up doing, uh, just about the time he came down with bacterial meningitis. Yeah. He w hated doctors in hospitals, and he thought he could just find some antibiotics somewhere from some friends and fix it well that didn't work <laughs> you know within a week and a half he was gone wow. and it was like bob you know doctors do fix these things you know he yeah. just didn't want to deal with That's it true. i think he felt that if anyone was a prime candidate for for having aids he would have it though i don't think i no, i don't think anybody actually i don't think he was ever diagnosed with it but i think he had this feeling at this point hey you know now or a couple of years from now, whatever it was, it was very, it was awful. I mean, he was a lovely guy. A so, I, 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 just, I really liked Bob a lot. He yeah. was, he but was, he was, he was very much. In fact, uh, friends of uh, friends of mine would come in and and you know to the to the apartment, and, and Bob wasn't there. So, oh, where's your faggot houseboy? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Bob's out doing something. You know? yeah. I mean, because he was a lot of time. I was working at the recording studio. He was trying to find a job, so he yeah. basically helped. Around the house. I mean, he was a, he was uh, anyway, there. Brian, you know, Brian, cleaned up. Yeah, <laughs> Brian, you can cat. barely <laughs> see Brian because he's in the dark now. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, there we go with Brian. Uh, so, uh, uh, as an official gay person, uh, you yeah. are an official gay person, are you not? Uh, uh, well, I don't have a card, so. Yeah, but. <laughs> oh my God, you don't have the. Uh, right. uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, if I carry something that's the size of a credit card, chances are it has a condom in it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, because uh, it, so I have your permission to call you a, a faggoty fuck. I don't give a fuck. Uh, this, <laughs> I call it the dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you gave you the idea, so I don't give a shit. I mean, I gotten Patrick's uh, uh, permission before to call him a, a gimp, right? <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard you, that you know what's funny? When you start talking, Patrick, we can barely hear you, and then as you talk, you get louder and louder. That, that's the way that I, I have it set, just because I want that attention. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I mean, uh, uh, we have... Uh, we have, uh, let's see, we have a gay person here. We have a, a handicapped, uh, or handicapable, excuse me, Patrick, a handicapable handy person. Uh, okay. And uh, we have a, a, a senior citizen. That would be me. Uh, and, me let's, and me too. And, oh, you too, <laughs> I forgot. Me too. Yeah. 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 How, well, how old are you, Mike? 65, right? How old are you? No, 63. 63? Oh, you're you, almost a senior. <laughs> you're a child. Well, you're a child. 
Well, now, nowadays it's six, what is it, 60, 60 or 55 if you're a senior? Yeah. Well, well only some places, yeah. Or something, uh, you know. Or P3 Wendy's. Uno's do that, does that, 55 and up. Yeah. <laughs> you get 20, 25% off on Wednesdays for your pizza. Oh, well, boy. I think you know, Rob, <laughs> Rob, uh, Rob learned that you can actually get a senior uh, ticket for a movie at 60 now, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, it was always like 60. They don't wait for 65. You get it at 60. Uh, That's right. Got my senior Metro card, half price on the subways and buses. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you showed it to us, but it doesn't say senior on, on, the, on the picture No, I know. I because... just, it's just like, I don't know why. I, I went down. I didn't order it or anything. I went down to the actual MTA office where they supposedly send them out, yeah. and they took my picture and everything, which is now worn off, so I... You know, at some point I probably have to go yeah. back down there because I'm sure it's going to. I won't know. I don't even know when the expiration date is because I think it, mine only expired. Have about a year mine or two mine expired, and they never sent me the other one. And still I, works. I, so I, no, so I go down to the, the use it, and it doesn't work. And they say it's expired. So then I call the MTA, and they say we sent it to you. And I said, well, I didn't get it. So they You're sent right. me another one, and it took. It's going to take lost about, the mail. It's going to take about two weeks. Inside, guys what they always say right <laughs> you out the caucus are working the system yes oh, you hey, hey, listen it's i'm taking i'm taking i'm taking everything cheap. I, i'm taking everything i can get even if somebody says oh would you like my seat on the subway absolutely move your ass <laughs> <laughs> move your fat ass move right. your fat ass right because i'm 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 sitting here i i get irritated yeah i get irritated at people who have their kids sitting in a seat on a subway my parents never went over little kids, yeah. Yeah, and and they're just sitting, and the kids are, you know, and I'm going, you little piece of shit. I, I still yeah. remember, you know, and I mentioned it before, the saying that you they had on the uh, on the subway. I'm I'm not remembering it accurately. No, no, I know. Like, I, 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 I no, if you if you if if you ride if you he, if your child rides for free, they must sit on your knee. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I haven't but seen that for a while. Maybe they changed it. This is in the 70s, uh, probably the last time I rode the subway. Uh, I thought it was little enough to ride your knee, little enough to ride for free. Yeah, and well, yeah. I really what it's changed to is if he's uh, small enough to ride for free, fuck yeah. you. You know, <laughs> right. it's pretty much uh, the uh, the philosophy, the operating philosophy here in uh, yeah. in uh, Yeah, so if he's that small, he'll take up two seats, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hey, uh, are the announcements on the subway as clear now as they used to be in the 70s? Better, better, much better. They're all yeah, they pre-recorded. Pre -recorded. They're pre-recorded, okay. yeah. In fact, uh, at Sirius, one of the women we worked with was the voice on the subways, the female voice. There's a male voice that I think talks about the various, like, please stand, bit, uh, stand away from the closing doors, please. That's a guy's voice. But yeah. then there's a woman's voice that gives all the other stuff, and she was doing that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember you, you couldn't make out what they were saying. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what the best and, thing and, was, and, and John will remember this. Yeah. At a certain point, they rejiggered the taxi cabs so that yeah. when you got into them and the guy pulled down the meter thing, a voice came on <laughs> and said, Welcome to, uh, you know, riding the taxi. And uh, a few instructions and so on. And then when it was over, it was, please pay your fare, you know, and you're on your way. Well, what they had for the voice was this woman they had at City Hall who had the yeah. thickest New York accent you could believe. And it yeah. was like, thank you for riding the bus thing here, you know. And, <laughs> and I used to get a great kick out of it because, I mean, I just, it was so, you remember, John? It was so New York. Yeah. You could well, do what you Didn't, didn't, didn't yeah, wasn't then, there a... A pre-recorded message with Michael Bloomberg. No, no, but no, but then point? what they did but is, that, is they yeah. decided that oh, what is that? Your kitty? That's they're the caddies. They're, they're, they're the kitties. They're actually uh, about to fight. Oh, they're about to fight. Wait a minute. Hey. Hold on a second. Uh, 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 okay, I've got it. I okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Rob, would you please announce yeah. the fight here? Describe the fight. I've got you in full screen. So the, the big one, the 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 eldest one, is on the the old lady is laying down and, and the the. The one-year-old is standing up, and the little one is growling yeah. right now. The, the the old lady, she's not happy. Yeah, she's growling. Yeah, and he's looking at her, trying to decide what the next move is going to be. 
Yeah. He's turned away right now, but he is going to he's going to do something. When they turn away for a moment, they're kind of like saying I don't care, but then they turn and they do the attack, if I remember yeah. correctly. What's with the tails? The tails are wagging. Yeah. Oh, they always that do. Means that hey, means, hey yeah, folks, if you if you watch any happy. other <laughs> podcasts on this on 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 the internet, you're really missing great internet broadcasting Alex, we're having the you, cat fights here on uh, on gap ucf ultimate cat fighting <laughs> yeah, Alex, you only said that the guys that got the most views were the ones that had a cat playing the piano yeah. oh, wait a minute the cat is now looking at you rob like he's not intending to do anything wait a minute looks no, like they... oh. <laughs> is there a growl going on there's a growl going on a steady uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like that. When you do that, you know uh, this is this is the. Uh, I think next week, next week on the next uh, Wednesday, we're going to do paint drying. So that will be, uh, <laughs> you know. So we're waiting. Take all bets. Take all bets. We're, we're, we're waiting for two odds. two cats uh, to to have a fight. Let, wait a minute. Is, does it look like it's going to happen uh, here? It looks look kind of looks a this little. This is uh, cat on cat action. It's interesting yeah. because. <laughs> The 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 uh, old lady is not afraid of him, but is annoyed by him. So yeah. he'll eventually just like either touch her with his paw and drive her crazy, or he'll he'll pounce on her. Either way, could go either way. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's take a bet? Take a bet. How long do you think this is going to take? I mean, we want to see have some no idea. action because probably can... through Jack's show, actually, but yeah. It'll still be on in an hour from now. Yeah, yeah. Jack and Amy will be like, "What's happening?" Yeah, I wish I had the cat here to look at this. She there probably right. didn't oh, be yeah. enjoying this. There you go. Oh well, the other one's walking away now. So well, Amy will yeah. say it's because oh, they're wait a they're trying to take money away from Planned Parenthood, and that's why the cats are fighting. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> planned Planned Kitty. Hood, well, yeah. let me know when they're fighting. Oh, there we go. There it is. Oh. Oh, 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 it's little, some discussion. It's a, uh, uh, oh, he she's really holding. He's backing off of her. See, see, right. he she really rules. But he teases her. But then when he gets now, I mad, think I'll lick my balls she, on national Internet broadcasting. She she really rules the roost, but he teases her, and it, there'd be no problems if he didn't tease her. Well, he but, he wants to see what he can get away with. That's what I exactly. Think it is. There we go. There's a little kitty wants his tummy rubbed. Okay. All right. I'm going go, to show her now that he's submission uh, hold. Uh, I'm going to go submission. back to uh, everybody on the screen here. We had it. Uh, we had a, a big deal there. We had a actual uh, uh, the actual cat fights here on uh, on Gabnet. This is a this is. I think we found our place. Uh, I think this is going to be an audience grabber. Uh, this should get us at least two or three more people. What were you going to say, John? Two more, two more just were added on to uh, Facebook Live. Oh, now one just went away. Just, we're uh, up to oh, they were there for a while. They heard that so. we were having cat fights right here on the yeah, show. Yeah, there you go. Thank you we so sure much, Rob. You improved our audience we sure numbers. We sure took the Whatever bets. I could do. I can never figure out what that number means because when it's over and I just let it run, sometimes there are like 400 people watched. So I don't know what that's all about that number. Mm. Maybe that's specifically whatever channel. I don't know. I just put on Facebook, and there you are. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. At some point, I don't know. I don't, I actually came on here. I don't know if this was a particularly interesting topic, but um, I ended up uh, a birthday present I got from my nephew last month was a DNA test thing. You could go and you, know, you spit into the thing and you yeah. send it off and they give you a genetic overview. Seeing I'm an adopted kid, I have no idea what my genetic background is. So I thought, well, okay, what the hell? Well, wait a minute. Let me guess. Well. Let me guess. Let me look at you and guess. Okay, guess. Well, I'd say, I had, that, I'd say there's some... I, I'd say I had I'd, almost I'd brownish say, black hair. Yeah. But, no, but so, let me, looking at you, let me... I bet you have some Irish in you. I think he's Very checked. good. Yeah. Very good. I, th I, I think, think he's. Uh, I think he's uh, either Greek or uh, uh, Dutch. No, not mm. Dutch. I, I would say you know those uh, countries around you know like Greece, Mediterranean countries. Mediterranean. Right? Yeah, that's it. Well, I thought that initially because I have a Mediterranean blood type, AB negative, which you don't find much in America. You find a lot in Italy, Greece, Turkey, Lebanon, that area. Yeah. So I figured there had to be some of that in there, and there was. 
it was only 17 percent yeah. but it was they think what's weird is i didn't know that they actually give you a, a timeline as to about when these particular uh you know ethnic groups might have been your great great grandparents okay so what are you what are you what are you okay 38 percent 38 and a half percent english slash irish okay so i i I, I was good there okay almost 90 over 90 percent what they called north northwestern european english irish french german you know like eight percent six percent french eight percent german 17 percent italian really no greek no they are just italian and then there are a, a smattering of the usual sort of little side things like, you know, 2% Scandinavian or whatever. And the, like a 1.000 whatever, uh, either Asian or Native American, which I doubt. I mean, it's like so, so little. I'd probably, probably send away for standard that. Standard deviation. Yeah. Yeah. But, they give everybody the same results. You send in the exactly. thing, you give me a $99 and everybody is the same. <laughs> and they're all English and Irish. You know? yeah. <laughs> probably... Probably because my last name is an English name, but that has nothing. Not, now, my father's family and my mother's family are heavily English. They go back to the Magna Carta. I mean, they're, except my my grandfa- my mother, and my grandmother, and my dad's side was second generation German. That I want to find out more about. I've been doing ancestry stuff on my dad, but it costs a lot more to get information from ancestry on foreign, not just American. If you go, if you want to get information from Europe or somewhere. You have to they you have to pay them more. Plus, Germany, of course, lost a lot of genetic uh, 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 of family information because they all got burned up in the Second World War. So it's really hard to find. My dad actually went over in the mid 30s after he got a, a, a law school and went and tracked down and hung out with some of the relatives from there. But that was so long ago. It was like in the 30s. You know? So listen, listen, no listen, 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 listen. Hold, hold on a second. Yeah. So yeah. We, we played. What is the DNA makeup of John Rockwell? The newest game now tonight is, what is Brian eating? <laughs> now let me let me let me bring this up full screen for people. Oh, hold see, hold it up, screen. hold it up because all the people are right below you. Uh, just hold it up yeah. around your mouth, whatever you're eating, and ah, let's try and guess this. what this right. is. Well, no, I'm higher, higher, higher. Oh, we can't good. see it. There we go. My is that God. chicken fried steak? Yeah, something like that. Or something like that. Something like that. Now, did you cook this, or did your mother cook it, or what? Nah, uh, she made it. She made it. Okay. All right. I just, uh, I was just wondering what you were eating there. Um, my mother was very, my mother was very smart in that her her husband's mother was German, so he she basically never tried to cook any German meals when we were growing up because you're not going to do any better than Mama used to make. Right. If we went to if we, if we had German, we went out, you know, yeah. to some German restaurant in the Chicago area, and there were some good ones. But I really I don't remember her ever, except for maybe hot dogs. You know, we never cooked anything German in the house. Yeah. Know? Smart woman. <laughs> is is the hot dog actually German or wasn't it well, invented? Frank Furter, you know, now before first, b- you know, before we go off tonight, I got to tell you something that I bought the other day. Okay. Uh, it was Prime Day on Amazon. Mm. And they were having a lot of cheap stuff on Amazon. And I bought for 89 bucks an item that usually costs 179. I bought an Echo. Oh. Anybody have one of these? I do. No, but you know they it's, came out with a new wait, wait, Echo. Hold on a second. I yeah. know they did. They came out with the video version of it. But it's yeah. not 89 bucks. Okay. It's 229. Yeah. So a- anyway, uh what do you think, Rob? I think it's. I'm having fun with it. It's fun, but you eventually stop using it, um, and then it, all of a sudden it'll scare the shit out of you because it thinks it hears something and it and it answers you. Um, but it, I mean, it's okay. You know, sometimes you want to hear some music and you say, "Alexa, play this or play that." Well, I subscribe. Could- I just subscribe to their Amazon Unlimited because it's only three ninety eight for people who have an Echo, and I can ask it to play anything in their library. You know, right. like the, the, yesterday I was saying, play Count Basie, and they played nothing but Count Basie for me. Yeah. What uh, does it play it through? The speakers, itself. speakers, in, or you can pair yeah. it to a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, but it, uh, if but you it, have a really nice Bluetooth speaker. But it, but it's it's uh, it's right in the thing itself, uh, okay. and uh, I I just I can oh, and I go uh, uh, Alexa, tune in, 
And it goes, uh, okay, I'll put on the last thing you were listening to, the Great American Broadcast Network, and then I can hear the programming. Yeah, you know, it's I, pretty cool. You know, it's a, a useful feature. Use it as a sh create shopping lists. You can also, so if you're in the kitchen and you go, oh, I'm out of mustard. Alexa, add mustard to the shopping list. Yeah. I added mustard to the shopping list, and then it shows up on your iPhone in the app, so you can oh. select everything. It's real cool. Uh, you know, I didn't stop to think about that. It the, works but, nice. but, uh, but what I, when you're cooking, you can just say, you know, you want a timer, uh, uh, please, uh, yep. run the alarm in 35 minutes or yeah. whatever. I wonder if that would work out well in the office. I just bought a CRM, but you have to type everything into that. With that uh, Echo, I could just say, oh, call the, Mrs. Jones the in the Echo, morning. The or, Echo has an open architecture that's open enough that it probably can do almost anything. I mean... If you have like some of these uh, light systems in your house yep. that run by computers and so on, yep. you can have it turn your lights up and down and and yep. whatever. Uh, it, I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I'm doing work on that right now because in the new house, yeah. I'm going to have some home automation. It'll turn your thermostats up and down. It'll turn your right. lights on and right. off. It'll raise and lower shades. and So anything Alexa, that Alexa it, it can become a very powerful tool. Uh, but yeah. the thing is, I, my, my cleaning woman today, she saw I had one. She says, I have one, but, but they can't use it. It doesn't work for me. And I said, why? She said, because I have this accent, and it doesn't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and I thought about that. For doesn't people learn, who have an accent, uh, it, 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 they probably have a harder time with it. I have no problem with it. I go, Alexa, stop. Alexa, start. Uh, Alexa, yeah. go fuck yourself. Don't. Then it says, that's not nice to say. You know, and things like that, you know. Uh, but I really try and chew your food. <laughs> Doesn't I think that I think uh, yeah. he's got a steam shovel there <laughs> putting that shit in. About, yeah. What were you I think say? the president has an Alexa and said recently just today said Alexa, find me a new secretary of state. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you hear the latest thing? He said Jeff Sessions, if he if he knew he was going to was going to recuse Rich himself Rich. from the Russia thing, he wouldn't have hired him. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. Well, you know. You can't have everything, uh, Donald. Yeah, well, fine. Isn't, it, isn't it amazing that this guy knows nothing about policy? All he wants to do is pass a bill. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, I know and, we're out of time here. It's not yeah, a good time to start talking about him, but it's funny. This no, guy just done that. <laughs> the Republicans wants to pass a bill, but he has no idea anything. He, he, you know, at least Obama could talk about the bill. He went out and he talked about Obamacare. He, he lied about it. He said you could keep your own doctor and stuff, but at least he went out there and he knew what was in the bill. It's one of the problems that the senators and and the Congress are having with him is that they, they're he's saying get it done, but. Yet, they don't know anything. He doesn't know anything about the bill and and what the problems are and why they can't get it passed. Well, he should look at that famous Schoolhouse Rock. You know, I am a bill, and I was on Capitol Hill. You know, you get it's a nice car. It's a cartoon. It's easy enough for everyone to understand how a bill becomes a law. <laughs> He's too busy well, watching CNN and tweeting to right. Break the rock, the uh, Simpsons rock. Rock, <laughs> rock, where the uh, where the little uh, Constitution guy says that. Uh, if Ted, well, this is back when Ted Kennedy was alive, and I said, if Ted Kennedy complains about a bill that I'm trying to get passed, I can just say that he's gay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Well, you uh, heard the, the, he the, the Kennedy parallel that just happened, the Kennedy parallel. I don't know if you saw, if you guys talked about it before I got on, about how John McCain was, they now found that he has a, a, a brain tumor. It's the exact same brain tumor that Ken, Ted Kennedy had at about the same age. Though they think it's it's treatable, but it, it's when he when he went in for the eye, you know, whatever that mm -hmm. was bleeding that was behind the eye, and they found this, I can't the gli gliostoma or whatever. I, it's yeah, I said that it was the North Vietnamese that beat the shit out of him, and that's why it took him that long. Him. <laughs> yeah, and and but on the Ted Kennedy thing, he hit his head on the steering wheel when he was killing uh, uh, when he was in Chappaquiddick, uh, which was Chappaquiddick, yeah, which was around this time so, back in the seventies. Yeah. There it yeah. Is. Little Mary Joe. All happens now, right? That's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh well. Yeah. That's not the not the best way to, to wrap up the hour. Right? Yeah. Hey, well, yeah. well, I got to get going here. I just noticed also that my picture uh, on the screen with you guys is frozen, so I had to go grab the other camera so that I could show it. So I when I sign off here. 
Uh, but oh no, uh, you're doing fine now. No, yeah, no I'm. Oh, I, no, no, you don't see me moving. Oh, you, you, see, oh, you see me moving, yeah, from this other yeah. camera, but not, not, right. not the camera that I should be using. Anyway, uh, that screw it. It'll. Won't I'll, see you guys tomorrow. Y- yeah, I got a, uh, I got mm-hmm. a dinner to go to. But uh, oh, uh, really good. Everybody enjoy yourself. Okay, good. And, and, oh, yeah. and and all you other guys, I hope we'll see you again tomorrow night. Hey, everybody, wave goodbye. Not That's not our sorry. panel, and ciao. I'm Alex <laughs> Bennett. Italian in me saying ciao. Uh, it's the Italian in you saying ciao. Anyway, uh, that's about it. That's it for now. I'll see you again tomorrow. By the way, ne- next on the same station, we have, of course, the uh, lovely and attractive um, Jack and the lovely and attractive Amy, and they'll be doing the intersection. And then at uh, midnight, uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, It'll be Connections right here, all on GabNet, a good night of programming on GabNet. I'm Alex Bennett. See you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.